jumping on again. I will uh, give my my pitch one last time for those that have cameras and you feel comfortable, turn them on. It's great to see faces rather than empty boxes. Uh, so I appreciate those who turned them on. But if you're uncomfortable uh, or you just want to be kind of passively on, uh, that is okay. Uh, you can still join in via the chat. And when uh, when it's time, you can certainly unmute and certainly ask questions uh, as we go. Uh, so, uh, Caitlin, or sorry, Lily was just reminding me uh, that a few years ago she was. I don't know if this is considered lucky or unlucky, Lily, uh, but the the course that I teach, IST 195 Introduction Information Technology, it's a big course uh, at the I school. It's all of our iSchool freshmen are, are in it, so usually about 110 or so um, uh, freshmen from the iSchool, and then usually around you know, another 140 or 150 from around campus take the class, and we'll talk about why in a minute. So it's a class of somewhere between two, 250, 300 students, um, which is abnormal for your iSchool classes, I would say, but it's by design that we do this one that way, and uh, when when Lily took it, what when was that? Was that fall of 23 uh it was fall uh 2021 or sorry fall of 21 that's what i meant yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry fall right, of 21. right after the covid semester yeah so uh so lily took the class and and at that time at syracuse we were socially distancing right if you remember those great old days of of covid uh and i was adamant that i didn't want to teach online uh that i wanted people back together but the problem is when you have 300 students, how do you socially distance 300 students? And there's only one place at Syracuse University that I could think we could do that. And that was in the dome, uh, the JMA Wireless Dome, formerly known as the Carrier Dome, uh, where our football team plays and our basketball team plays. Uh, and because I'm involved in athletics and I know some folks, I, I went to them and said, hey, I want to teach my class in the dome. And they thought I was joking until I wasn't. Uh, and that's what we did, right, Lily? You, we we had class in the dome. We yeah. socially distanced 300 students. Uh, yeah. My lectures were on the big center hung video board. That was our projection screen. They yeah, built me a little stage. Uh, yeah. yeah, built me a little stage. I had a mic. And look, it 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 was certainly an experience. It's the only class ever taught in the dome, and something I'm sure Lily will remember. Uh, mm -hmm. For me, as a professor. It was great and better than being online, but it uh, it didn't replicate a classroom because they could hear me really well. I couldn't hear them as they asked questions, so they would text in their questions. I had a little texting platform, uh, and and we we got through the semester. Uh, so uh, fun fun times, maybe not so fun times, but you make the best of it. So I'm going to go ahead and, and share my screen, uh, and we can talk. Let's do this. Okay. And I'm just going to just give me a second as I rearrange so I can see some stuff and you can see some stuff. Uh, all right. So and you might see some of your faces on here. And uh, I'm just going to kind of go like this real quick. Um, feel free to ask questions as we go. Uh, and just because of the way I'm sharing my screen, I may jump a couple times back to the chat just to see what's going on. So first of all, you know, even if I if I go back uh, one slide for a second, sorry. Um, you know, thought it would be fun to generate an image in AI. Uh, why not? Uh, so I just fed it. Hey, this is kind of what I'm talking about and what I teach. Can you build me a a image? And uh, and this is what it it generated earlier tonight uh, for this class. So I am uh, Jeff Rubin. I have a, a few different roles um, in the iSchool. In fact, I'm going to stop sharing for a second. I'm just going to do this different so I can still see you. I'm going to just share the PowerPoint so then I can see you at the same time. Okay, now I should be able to see you, and I can. And you can see me, hold on. All right, much better. Uh, so I, I do have a few roles in my life and, and that's probably because I've never been able to figure out what I wanna do when I grow up. And, and even though I'm 50, I still feel like I haven't grown up yet. Uh, so I have been teaching at the iSchool uh, for 27 years. 
And, and before that, I was a student at the iSchool. So as Lily said, I did my undergrad and my master's work uh, in the iSchool. Uh, and while I was getting my undergrad a long time ago, uh, the internet was just commercializing. Web browsers were just becoming a thing. Uh, and so I started a company uh, as I was doing some web development and thought it was fun. Uh, and I started a company called Sidearm Sports. Um, and I'm, I'm still the president of Sidearm, but I sold the company to a, a much larger company called Learfield. Uh, that's the logo on the top there. I sold it to them in 2014, but remain on um, as president of Sidearm and uh, executive vice president of digital for, for Learfield for the last year and a half or so. Uh, and then if three jobs wasn't enough, um, about three years ago, the chancellor of Syracuse University came to me and said, Jeff, would you help advise me on digital transformation? So he's really looking at Syracuse University and really the student experience and how do we grow from our digital experience uh, from what we have in 2023 to where we want to go in 2030, right? Like, and, and it's not going to all happen at once, but kind of this, this transformation. And that was supposed to be six months, uh, but now I'm on three years and, and still doing that. And it's, it's like another full-time job, but I absolutely love it, uh, getting to work with him and the executive team at the university. And we'll talk some of what those transformation uh, pieces will be and maybe what you can expect uh, if you come here as a student. All right. Uh, and sorry, I'm just bringing up the chat in case there's any Ooh, questions. Sorry. Oops, okay. Uh, so welcome to, to 2023, right? And, and this is scary, but it's all true. Uh, Facebook knows who we are, right? Uh, and, and what I mean by that, it, it doesn't know that I'm Jeff Rubin. They probably know more about me than I know about myself, or at least that I'm willing to admit about myself, right? Uh, and, and again, not sure how many of you are on Facebook. I get it. But uh, take the word Facebook out and put Snapchat or TikTok, and it's the same thing, right? So so they know who our friends are. Uh, they know what we watch. They know when we zoom in on something. They know when we're stalking. They know what what we're looking at. I mean, they know everything, right? Google knows what we want uh, because it's it's constant, right? It's trying to predict what we want, even when we don't even know we want it. Uh, but but Google's trying to, to help us with that. Uh, Amazon, of course, knows everything that we buy. Um, and Netflix knows what we watch. Apple knows how we operate, right? Uh, I assume most of us have iPhones, maybe not all of us, but it doesn't matter. It could be Google knows how you operate if you're an Android user. Apple knows how you operate uh, if you're an, an iPhone user. And I mean, when you think about that, the point of this is, you know, some of these companies right now, Google, uh, Amazon, they're under, I hate to say federal investigation, but the, the Department of Justice is doing an inquiry, right? And saying like, is this, uh, is what they're doing ethical? Is it fair? Is it right? Uh, is it a monopoly, right? These are questions that will probably get answered by the time you're you're in kind of college or in your college uh, life. But the other side of this is just recognizing that what is privacy? What does privacy mean in 2023 um, and beyond? What should privacy mean? Uh, and what if things change? Like, you know, some people say, well, I don't want these companies to know everything about me. But then on the other side of the mouth, you're saying, well, wait a second, where did all my great recommendations go of what I'm supposed to binge watch on Netflix, right? And so it's like, we don't want them to know, but we want them to know when it benefits us. Um, and, and so it, it, it is not an easy thing to think about. When I look at generative AI, and when I say every software company is leaning into gen AI, uh, and every business that I know is working on an AI strategy, and if, and if the business isn't working on an AI strategy, I question what kind of business they are uh, and, and how they plan to operate in the next decade. Um, now, AI doesn't necessarily just mean generative AI. We're going to talk about that a little bit more tonight. Uh, there's many aspects of AI. Of course, you know, the big one right now is chat GPT and Bard and, and Claude and, uh, and the generative AI models. Um, but, but we're going to look beyond that. And I think just like up above, there's this ethical approach to what these companies are doing with our privacy. There is an ethical approach to AI. We don't know what that is yet, 
Uh, and my gut is the United States won't be the first to figure it out. Uh, it, it'll probably be the European Union or, or some other group of countries or country, um, but we, we will get there. Uh, then we look at data breaches. Uh, it's every day, right? Companies every day. It's, it's all, and again, maybe right now the only mail you're getting is from universities. Um, but I promise you, if, if you ask your parents some of the mail they get in the last year, how many notices have they gotten that says, uh, we're sorry, we had a data breach and your name and email address or so-and-so was compromised. Don't worry, we've signed you up for a free year of credit reporting. Uh, you know, I, if I could bank these credit reports, they would long, last longer than I'm, I'm gonna live uh, because I'm, it's constant data breaches. And, and then you go into data strategy, how do we manage all this data, right? All these companies that are collecting data on you, how's that managed? It's a massive issue even, and again, you might be wondering how does this all relate to sports? And I promise you on the next slide, we're gonna start making that connection. And you see chat GPT, Bard, Claude, more generally AI is changing everything and it will, right? This, this, is, this is what's setting up as, when we look at the future, it, it, it is AI. We've got a lot to figure out here. It is not going away. Um, and we see how it's being used both ethically, unethically, misinformation, disinformation, a lot of issues. All of these are things that we talk about in the high school. I get pretty excited about these and I could talk for hours just about this one slide, uh, but you don't want to because you want to talk about sports. So let's, um, let's go forward. All right. Uh, and do me a favor in the chat. Can you all just kind of type in, where are you from? Where's home? All right, so in the chat, just throw in where, you don't, you can just write it to everyone. You don't have to write it to me. Um, so we got Maryland and Tenafly, New Jersey, New Jersey, Boston, another Maryland, Connecticut, another Jersey, Rochester, right west of Syracuse. New York, Tanner, I don't know if is that New York City area, New Jersey, Toronto, Strat, Stratford, is that Connecticut? Uh, New Jersey, Washington, D.C., another one from D.C., L.A. See, this is why we do it at 8 p.m. So you L.A. folks, it's only 5 p.m. People like me, I'm ready to go to bed, uh, and I will right after this. Uh, Connecticut, Syracuse, Angelina, I love it, with a nice heart. Uh, Vesta, New York. Newburgh, New Jersey, Lexington, Mass. Love this. All right. So we've got a lot of folks kind of on the East Coast side. We've got um, at least one from LA, which I love to see. We've got one from Canada. Uh, great to see. So thank you. Just like to know. And that person, Maya in, in Lexington, I grew up in Wayland, Massachusetts. So it's pretty close to you. Um, I was just back there last week. Okay. Uh, thank you for doing that with me. So Talking, I, I want to talk about AI for a minute and, and in relation to sports, right? So when we look at it, again, the point of this isn't to, to give you a lecture, uh, but to hopefully have some fun, um, even though it's going to sound like a lecture. But when we look at what AI is, right, it, it's just we are making machines think and act like humans, right, and perform tasks that humans used to do. And sure, some people might say, but you're killing jobs. And then there's the other argument. Sure, we are killing some jobs, but we're creating other jobs, right? Because computer scientists, computer engineer, cloud computing, security, privacy, ethics, uh, we need jobs for all of those, right? That didn't exist prior uh, to the AI. And so um, we are creating much higher paying jobs uh, for a much uh, more educated workforce uh, is, is what I would say. When I look at sports, and I did this tonight, just about an hour ago, I was saying, like, what am I going to talk about with AI and sports? And so I jotted down the first five things that came to mind, uh, but there's many others of how is AI being used in sports today? And analytics, by far, number one, uh, and we'll talk about this in a few slides. I'll talk about Moneyball. I don't know how many people have ever seen the movie Moneyball. Uh, I don't even know how many of you know Brad Pitt, who was the actor in Moneyball. Uh, but he is a famous actor. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But but the idea of analyzing data to help teams make decisions, right? And we'll talk about what the NFL is doing with this in a minute. 
uh, what the NBA is doing, what college sports are doing. Injury prevention is a big one, even at Syracuse, if, if, during all the practices and, and ga- in certain games, um, the players are wearing uh, sensors, right? And this is pretty normal. And they are monitoring biomechanics. So measure, measuring heart rate, um, measuring body temperature, right? And they are, what the, the goal of this is to be able to identify injury before it happens. Like when is it time to pull somebody off the court? When is their body at the point of too much strain or, uh, you know, to, to get scary for a second, it is not uncommon almost on a yearly basis. I feel that I read something where a high school football player passed away from heat exhaustion, usually down South, uh, because they were doing two a day camps, uh, and their body overheated. That shouldn't happen in 2023. Right. I mean, you could argue it should never happen, but it should not happen in 2023 because we have the technology to monitor the body and be able to have somebody say, hey, you're too hot. Get to the sidelines, cool down, drink some water. Right. Officiating. You might love this. You might hate this. um, But, you know, you wonder what are what are officials going to be in 10, 20 years? We already see it with minor league baseball um, and and it's going to soon be with major league baseball right? Where we don't need the umpire behind home plate, right? Because he or she doesn't call balls and strikes. They, you know, they do it with their own mind, what they think versus what is really the strike zone, right? Which, which should be the same for everybody. Uh, and, and so we can have an official deal. We see it in tennis where we can see if something was inbounds or out of bounds, right? Uh, if you watch Thursday night football um, on, on Amazon, we see it where they have uh, kind of their next gen stats and you can see all this analysis of what's going on. So fantasy sports, I don't know how many of you play fantasy sports. Uh, I'm in a pick em league uh, because I, I, I would get addicted if I tried to actually do a real fantasy team uh, and I, I, don't need, I don't have time for another job, uh, but I do do a pick em league. And I spend way too much time trying to figure out, uh, but, but right. It's all data. It's all data and AI that is helping to generate this, uh, in chat bots, which I, I put this in here just because some of these sound really hard. And then you get to a chat bot. Uh, we implement, so my company, we implement chat bots on a lot of sites, uh, and they're not humans chatting, right? It's, it's just a bot. Uh, and, but they act like a human. Sometimes we give them a name. Uh, sometimes the people don't know they're humans, but the idea is you, a fan could ask a question in just normal, natural language. Like, Hey, can I bring a pet to the game? Or can I bring my purse to the game? Or where can I buy tickets to the game? Or, uh, do you have kosher food or gluten-free food at the game? Whatever it is they want to ask. And the idea is that the chat, the chat bot, just like some of the bots you've used with AI should be able to learn uh, as more questions are asked and also be able to respond, not from just looking it up in a keyword, but being able to, to, to truly learn uh, from what's being asked in, in previous information. Okay. Um, I'm just going back to the chat real quick, see if there's questions, nothing yet. Great. Feel free to ask away uh, and let's go forward. So when we look at other technologies that are part of sports, it, it's, I mean, I could go on and on and on. Right. My company, which I'll, I'll talk about for a brief minute, um, we're in the web space. So uh, I'll get to that in, in just what, one second. But we do college athletic. Oops, sorry. We do college athletic websites for almost every university in the country, uh, college athletic program. So whether it's Qs.com, and that's really the only one you need to know because it's the best. Uh, Qs.com, I'll say again, C-U-S-E.com. Uh, that's that's the best. But whether it's them or Ohio State or Michigan or Duke or Georgetown or whomever, um, we, we, we do all those. We do their mobile apps. Um, statistics, we were just chatting about that. So some of these we're going to talk about more in depth over the next 15 minutes or so. Uh, broadcasts, right? I mean, just how many of you put it in the chat, if you don't mind, how many of you still have what we call linear television, meaning cable TV versus uh, over the top meaning like YouTube TV or something else. So, so does anyone still use uh, cable? 
right? Somebody, we so I a, we did get a question from Jack about AI. Oh, Jack. All right, perfect. The A, I'm going to read this. And you guys, look at you, all these people with cable. Look at you. I'm, I'm very, uh, tell your parents to get rid of it. Cut it. Go outside right now. Just cut the cable. Do it. All right. Um, okay, don't do it. We can't afford that. Uh, so the AI proposed fantasy trades through things like IBM Watson are extremely one-sided with flawed background thinking. Why don't we help these AI platforms get to a common sense? Jack, come to the AI school and do this. That's exactly right, right? So look, some of these models are flawed. Um, and and IBM Watson, I'm not going to say you know it's bad technology. It's incredible technology. But um, what I would say is is look at some of the newer platforms that are coming out there. And and was Watson trained to be able to do things like some of the other platforms that could be trained on statistical data? So yeah, Jack, it's a great insight. Cable, cable, and cable. Yeah. Um, I'm taking an AI and machine learning at the graduate level right now, where we're learning about things like um, one sided like AI machine learning type things. And it has a lot to do with bias. And, you know, when people hear AI, sometimes they think, um, as Professor Rubin was saying before, that it gets rid of jobs, but really AI needs human intervention to make sure the models that they're training are working properly. So um, this one-sided thinking you're thinking of actually has to do with the bias of the people who are creating the model. And so whoever's telling Watson to, to read these statistics, read this data, might have their own bias towards what teams they want to see succeed or win or what players maybe are better in their fantasy league and they don't want to lose to their friends. And so that's exactly that's right. Thank you, Lily. And this is where it gets really scary because what happens when AI starts training itself on disinformation? So in other words, if you start feeding an AI model because I'm posting on X, formerly known as Twitter, uh, I'm posting disinformation, meaning information that's truly uh, uh, wrong, and I know it's wrong, but I get these large language models, which is what this generative AI is, these large language models, I get them to train on that data, it is going. It doesn't know the difference today between what's real and what's fake, and, and that becomes a real problem, um, real, real problem. Uh, anyway, too many of you have cable, tell your families they can save money by going to YouTube TV. Uh, I will give you my code so I get five dollars. Uh, no, I'm joking. Uh, but if I had a code, I would do that. Um, but you, yeah, anyway, you don't need cable. It's silly. Uh, I watch all my sports on YouTube TV, and I get much more of them than I did on cable. But anyway, uh, we're going to talk about sensors. We're going to talk about data analytics a bit. Social media, really. Here's the beauty of of the I school um, and. and you can mix technology with any discipline you want, right? So for me, um, I love technology uh, and I love sports, but I knew early on in my life, I wasn't going to be an athlete. My kids are now in high school. I have a son who's who's your age, a senior looking at colleges. Um, I invited him tonight. He didn't want to come. But, uh, but anyway, uh, the, the idea of um what was i going with here i completely lost my my train of thought of, of what i was even talking about for for two seconds but the the idea of going into school and knowing what you want to study right um so if it's if you like technology that's fantastic for me i love sports as i said i knew i was going to be an athlete but I was able to take technology, take sports and find that intersection and make a career out of it. But if you're on tonight because this lecture maybe intrigued you, but you're not a huge sports fan, take out sports and put in any other discipline, entertainment, music, arts, government, nonprofit, automotive, uh, I mean, literally take any other field in the globe and that field cannot be successful in its future without technology. I don't care if it's a for-profit company, a non-profit company, if it's government sector, there is no one that can tell me an industry that can succeed without technology. I don't care if it's trash collection. I don't care if it's lawn mowing. I was driving through the university yesterday, and we just had a robotic lawnmower uh, mowing the lawn. It was the coolest thing. Uh, I, I absolutely loved it. Um, so everybody is being transformed with technology. My love is the intersection of sports. All right. So we talked about sidearm. Oh, sports. I I did. Oops. 
Somebody had some audio. I listened to that. So just make sure your microphones are muted if you could. Thank you. Thank you. I um, have another question in the chat. Uh, I have a question. Lots of AI models are in their infancy. That is true. Suffer from hallucination. That is true. And thoughts on how we can prevent this as AI gets more embedded into sports and analytics. Here's the thing is we have to train the models. And I think what you're going to end up with is a lot of specialized large language models uh, that different companies run. And that, so what do I mean by this? You know, my company has a lot of sports data, right? I don't necessarily want to feed this all into Claude or Bard or chat GPT because then it's part of their model, but it's my data. Right. And this is one of the, this is one of the, 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 the issues at hand, which is uh, do we want all these AI models being trained on our data where I'm not making any money on it, but it's my company's data. I think what you're going to see is sports and analytics as well as other niche areas will have their own large language models. And, and perhaps there's going to, you have to pay for some of that data. Uh, perhaps it's just part of a subscription model. Perhaps it's free, but you have to log in. We'll see. But it, we, all of the, everything you just said, Rahil, is 100% correct. We're at the infancy of these models. And you will look back in 10 years and be like, wow, can you believe when I used to ask chat GPT and this was the response I got, right? But um, it, it, it will change. All right, uh, I got to stop sharing and reshare just because I'm going to do a different screen for a second. So, sidearm sports, right? I just I thought this would be fun just to show real fast. Uh, let me just share my whole desktop. Okay, and I'm going to go over to a web browser, and let's just see what we've got running here. Uh, let's just see. Okay, let me just load this up here real fast. So what I am doing right now um, is looking at, let's see if I can see this, All right? So what this is showing me is in the last 30 minutes, there's been 103,000 people on our websites um, is what this is showing. And, and so that's in the last 30 minutes. This is looking at, and I don't know, September 17th. So the last month, 69 million users uh, who are who are on our websites. And uh, this, I don't know if this is really going to be helpful, what I'm looking at right now. This is just a quick snapshot of like, where are people right now? Uh, and we can, I don't know why this is, this looks really odd to me, but we're going to go with it nonetheless. Um, we can begin to see, you know, not only where people are, but this is looking at really since football started division one schools we've had 105 million users division two 17 million more on division three 19 million we then can break it down by which conference is getting the most traffic big 10 sec not surprising foot big football conferences we can then look at schools you can any any sports fans here know why colorado would be the number one traffic site uh this year Go ahead and throw that right in the chat. Uh, why has Colorado got the most traffic? I promise you they did never had the most traffic in any other year. There you go, Ford Coach Prime. Coach Prime, Coach Prime, Coach Prime. Now everyone's catching up. Uh, yeah, right. So this is the Coach Prime factor. Uh, they've had 7.7, .7, almost 7.8 million page views uh, since the start of the football season. Next up is Texas, then Michigan, then Ohio State, Florida, Penn State, Wisconsin. All these are clients to sidearm. Uh, this data is really useful because on every one of these pages, we have ads. Ads make us money. Um, and also, obviously, the school just trying to, to push out their, their brand. Right. So not only can we see at any moment from an analytics side what is happening and where is traffic, um, and again, it's, it's getting late on a Thursday night, uh, and there's very few games going on right now. Um, but if you look at this on a Saturday, it'll be, you know, tens of thousands of users on the sites and they're hammering and they're looking at, like, we can even probably see what they're looking at here. Uh, if I see what content they're looking at, 
we could go in and say, all right, they're looking at James Madison, they're looking at West Virginia. Actually, I think West Virginia might be playing a football game. Um, you can see West Virginia, they're looking at uh, schedule pages, they're looking at rosters, they're looking at Rashi Rice, Ra Rashi Rice roster page. So we can see what they're doing, where they're coming from. I can see from where in the world is this traffic uh, coming from, and you can see most of it's from the United States. But, you know, in the last five minutes, we've had traffic from uh, all these countries uh, as well. All right. And then we could dive in into the United States and be able to see where in the United States is this traffic coming from, so forth and so on. So to me, this gets pretty exciting and, and important. Again, I'm going to stop sharing just for a second um, so I can go back to seeing all of you go to the chat. Uh, bu, 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 bu. All right, we're still on Coach Prime. Cool, cool. All right, I'm going to share back to the PowerPoint. So the point of that was just to show from a data side, we are collecting a lot of data, right, on, on all these sites, on all these users. When people come to a site, uh, oftentimes you know who they are, not necessarily by name. Like, I don't know it's Ford or Rahil or any of you folks, uh, but I do know that it's your browser and I know what else your browser's interested in. So I know, hey, this person's interested in Nike sneakers or they're interested in a certain car brand or a perfume brand or whatever it is. And we can push out ads based upon um, what we know about that, that fan, right? Uh, that's the, how the advertising works. The, the mobile apps, um, which we do for most of our schools, this is right. A mobile app is critical, uh, in that it's oftentimes the ticket to a game, right? So, uh, while we don't do the ticketing, we integrate with Ticketmaster and Pac Yolen, who are the two biggest ticketing providers in college sports. And so when a fan shows up to the stadium, that's their ticket in. If our app doesn't work, fans cannot get into the stadium. Uh, you don't want it like Saturdays during football, are anything but relaxing for me or anybody on the, on the staff, right? Because we are responsible for every football fan getting into every stadium uh, uh, around this country. And it is, it is stressful uh, if there's a technology issue, you know, for you, you don't think much about it. You just go into your app and, and it works and it, and it should work. Uh, but there's a, a lot of stress on the system. I don't know if you've ever been to a stadium where you can also, instead of it also being your ticket, it can be for concessions, much like if you've gone to Disney if anyone's been to Disney and you have your magic bands and you can pay for things, same type of thing uh, where you can pay with your phone using the same technology, right? Uh, we can do predictive play uh, on the apps so fans can engage answering questions, kind of like a precursor to, to sports wagering that's out there. Let's go to something fun. So RFID in uh, the NFL, right? And we all know T Swift. Right. What would a lecture be without Taylor? And what would an NFL game be without Taylor being mentioned in the broadcast? Um, yes, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, but she is right now. But uh, this is when Tra uh, Travis Kelsey you know, scored the touchdown. Right. And so we could go in. Sorry, I've got to just sh stop sharing and share one more time as I go back here. And share this if i went to nfl uh next gen stats right and we go in here um so if if i go in let's do stats uh or we can even do highlights and we go in and we say we're looking so i'm a bills fan right so we're gonna go to buffalo and maybe, well, not this last week because they lost, uh, but maybe we'll go to week four. Uh, and here, right, so here's a play. And you might look at this and say, why is this interesting? Well, if I just hit play here, right, and we're looking at this animation, and here's Josh Allen, and there's Stefan Diggs. And there's the touchdown, right? Um, and Buffalo's up 34 to, to 20. 
This, so this gets really interesting when you think of the technology that's behind this, because if I play that again, right, there is, uh, oh, this is the next play. Sorry, that's not going to be super exciting. Uh, okay. Let's go back in here and let's just search for digs. Right. And we can see every play that we want. Uh, let's do the 50 yard, 55 yard touchdown pass. This will be a fun one to see. I'm going to hit play. All right. So back goes Josh Allen. There are RFID tags in every player's uh, shoulder pads. And so essentially what's an RFID tag? It's it's just a sensor. Uh, by the way, this is so much fun to watch, isn't it? Uh, especially if you're a Bills fan. Um there's sensors. And so what you're looking at is where every player was on the field at that exact moment. This isn't just like imprecise. It's, it's completely precise. It's, it's real time uh, data that allows you that, that generates this. It's the same technology. If you're watching Thursday night football, uh, which is tonight on, on Amazon prime. Right. So really cool stuff when we're talking about sensors and what can be done. Uh, and there are now like in the NBA, they're beginning to use sensors in the balls, sensors on shoes. And so you could almost officiate a game without an official, whether you think that's good, bad, indifferent. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to go a little faster. Just try to wrap this up in the next few minutes. Has anybody here put it in the chat? If you have uh tough being a giants fan, giants suck. Great. I'm glad I created chaos, uh, but it is true. The giants do suck. Uh, Okay, so has anyone ever seen Moneyball? Yes, no, throw it in the chat. You've watched, okay, well, look at this. I love this. Yes, look at all these yeses. Maybe the same people that have cable because I'm sure it's on one of those old cable channels. Uh, so I've read the book. All right, look at you, studious Ryan. I like that. I have not even read the book, uh, but I have seen the movie several times. Um, let's just talk about Moneyball for a minute. So Moneyball was was based on the GM of the Oakland A's, right, who uh, way back when in the 90s basically said, hey, I don't want to put together a baseball team like they've always been put together. I'm going to stop sharing just for a second just so we can we can talk. I don't want to put to a baseball team like we always have. And why is that? Because baseball teams in the past were put together based on gut, gut instinct, saying like, hey, I think this person's really good, or they've hit this many home runs. But the reality is what happens is we all have uh, biases, whether we admit it or not, right? We have biases. We look at somebody and we say, they're too tall, they're too short, they're too skinny, they're overweight. Uh, I don't like the color of their skin. I don't like their hair. They're wearing glasses. They're not wearing glasses. Whatever it may be, they're from this area of town. Um, we have biases. Right. We judge people. Just it's I judge people. You judge people. We just do that. We judge people. What Moneyball did is said, hey, let's cut through. Let's take all that out. Let's just look at the sport from an analytical standpoint, from a statistical standpoint. And when you look at it from a statistical standpoint, it says these are what you need to earn runs. These are the players that are going to get you to earn runs and forget. I mean, Coach Prime says this, right? He's like, what's this culture thing you're talking about, right? And I, I've got some issues with that, but what's this culture thing? Like we, we, we're here to win. And so if, if we do it from a statistical side, what are the components we need to win? And they did this and they made it to the World Series, right? With the lowest, if not one of the lowest salaries in baseball, uh, which was unbelievable. That was the start of a trend with the Oakland A's. Today, there is not a team in the NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, um, whoever else I missed, soccer and college sports that doesn't have data analysts. It is a full-time profession where every team is hiring data analysts because what they are looking at is, I mean, even in Syracuse, during practices and games, it's where were you on a court? What was the, di if in football, what was the distance between a safety and a wide receiver, right? And, and all those dots I showed you with NFL Next Gen, they can calculate exactly where somebody was and tell them precisely why they missed the play, right? We can see acceleration speed. Um, so all this data that, that you can get. 
Uh, I feel like the Phillies are currently disproving the money ball strategy. They show important intangibles and love and the passion of the game matter. Numbers don't account for all that. That's fair, Jack. Uh, that's fair, right? Numbers won't account for everything, but I, I would also argue if we don't use data analytics as part of this, um, then you will be at a disadvantage, right? So I agree it's not everything, but I also wouldn't agree to say you can throw it out, right? Um, and so what, I, I, what I'm saying, you've got to have, right, you got to love what you do and, and you've got to have passion for what you do, but you do need data to help. It'd, it'd be the same thing of, I have a store, but I'm not using data to know what products are most successful, right? You need data regardless of, of what industry you're, you're in. Uh, does AI also assist coaches and teams create game strategies? Yes, absolutely it does. Uh, I've seen the models. I've seen what coaches use uh, for college sports and professional sports where you can go in literally get to show me this player every pick and roll that they've ever had that resulted in a three-point play from this corner of the court with less than two minutes left in the game. I mean, you can get so specific and it'll show you literally within seconds every play from an entire season where you can go through and watch it. I mean, so this is what coaches have at their fingertips. Um, yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, yes, that's right, Lou. The concept of film is a hundred percent changed, uh, and and that you know it used to be more videographers, people who are great with video, who could cut film. Today, it's about the data, right? It, it's really about someone who can who can get through the data and and look at film and from an X's and O's. Um, absolutely. All right. Um, I'm just seeing if there's. I'm gonna just jump. What I'm gonna pause here is I've, I've taken 47 minutes of your time. Um, questions. Thoughts. Feel free to ask ask anything. What uh let, let me ask ask you a question. Uh let, let's go with a favorite sport, favorite team. So you can, you know, what, what's your favorite sport? What's your favorite team? By the way, Syracuse is always a good answer. Any sport. What's Syracuse is always a good answer? No. Uh let's see. Liverpool and soccer. Love it. Okay. Football and the Rams. I was at SoFi last year watching a game with them. Bruins and hockey. Uh, ho another hockey, New York Rangers. Hockey, a lot of hockey. Hockey, Blackhawks. Football, Giants. I'm sorry. That guess we all can't be winners. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't hate me. Don't, don't, don't hang up on me. I, I'm not mean. I am mean. Football, Bills. Lily's right. She's got a winner. Football, Ravens. It's fine. Lamar's good. NHL Montreal. I'm a tennis player, but I like watching football. Giants fans stick to tennis. It'll be more love. Basketball and Wizards. Uh, hockey, but the Bronc. Bronc hockey, but Broncos. Okay. Mm -hmm. Liverpool and soccer. Manchester United. All right. Love it. Guys, gals. The point is, whatever team you love, if you start looking at the game also from a data side, from an, from a sports technology side, uh, the like these stadiums today, when I tell you like we have cameras and those cameras can count people, like we know where anybody is in a concourse at any time, not necessarily where Ford is, right? We don't necessarily care where Ford is, but we do care is what are the wait times at concession stands? What are the wait times in bathrooms? What are the wait times at certain entrances? How can we disperse crowds, right? We even can get to the point, I was, I was working with a firm the other day where they have sensors uh, in the seats that can, uh, they're measuring sound, right? Noise. And what we're trying to do is say, does a section that creates certain decibels of noise increase or decrease ticket sales? I mean, just think about what we can do there, right? So do fans like to attend more in a certain section because it gets really loud? Or do we see when we have sections that are really loud, uh, people do, people say, no, I, I'd want to sit elsewhere. The amount of data we're collecting and things that we're doing are, I mean, you would be amazed uh, at the data collection with you just bringing your phone and yourself to a game. All right, Lily, I'm going to kick it over back to you. Cool. Thank you so much for that. Um, so great to have you on. Um, I'm, we still have some time. We have about 10 minutes. If anyone has any questions about 
anything in admissions, anything about life at Syracuse, clubs, classes, organizations, anything you can think of, I'm happy to answer. I also have um, some information if you guys are looking for it for upcoming events, other mock classes we have, um, I can drop that link in the chat now. Um, and yeah, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask me or Jeff. And I'll, I'll say this, uh, I'd love to have y'all come to Syracuse. Love the place, if you can't tell. Got Syracuse stuff behind me. Uh, <laughs> but the if you come to Syracuse, if you come to the iSchool, uh, I'll be lucky enough to have you in your first class. So the first class you take in the iSchool is my class, uh, IST 195. And, and the idea is, yes, there's a lot of references to sports because it's it's what I do, but every class is a different topic in technology. So every week we're covering some different aspect. It could be social media, web development, networking, security, privacy, cloud computing, internet of things, et cetera. Um, so team, you're the best. Thank you for participating. Thanks for putting up with my my humor uh, or lack thereof, Zacchaeus. Uh, your giants will get better someday, maybe before you graduate. It'll be okay. Uh, I love the look. I love the look. All right, team, thank you. We appreciate you. Feel free. If you have any questions, I'll stay on for a few minutes. If not, we are we are good and you can hop off. Have a great night. Justin, great question. I saw what you asked about a sports analytics major. So we don't have one in the iSchool. There's a sports analytics major in the Falk School, um, but they work very closely with the iSchool um, and you'll probably take classes between the two schools. Um, what's that your minor classes? Yeah, so we have three different minors. Um, I'm answering Mark's question now. We have three different minors in um, the iSchool. Uh, one is our information management and technology minor. One is our data analytics minor. And the other one is the more entrepreneurial minor that we most recently started. Um, you will be able to take classes and get a minor in any of those as long as it works with your um, your new house scheduling. So as long as you're taking your major classes for new house and you have room to complete a minor, which you should be able to do easily, you will have um, free reign of iSchool classes to take um, to fulfill those minors. Does anyone else have any questions? All right. Thank you, crew. Have a great night. Appreciate you jumping on. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you. Night, Lily. Thank you. Bye, all.